What's up everybody? Today we're talking about improving our rhythm. We're going to go over that exercise I just played and many more. Let's get to it. But what is rhythm, you may ask? Rhythm is the idea of keeping a pulse to a set time frame. And this time frame is measured by how many pulses can be performed in one minute. This is otherwise known as beats per minute. These pulses can be broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. And this is the idea of the rhythm grid. These smaller pieces help us play more complex rhythms and keep time because there's less space between each beat. Anthony Wellington created a great video that we can watch that helps explain this concept. And you can watch it by clicking the upper left hand corner. Anthony uses this concept of a rhythm yardstick to help break down our rhythms into smaller pieces. He puts the downbeats or the quarter notes on the longer, longest lines of the yardstick like this. He then puts the eighth notes on the slightly shorter pieces halfway between each long one, like this. He then puts the E and A uh of the beat on the shortest pieces because they represent the shortest amount of time. This is how he's breaking down the rhythm yardstick. This idea of a yardstick is a great tool because it helps us visualize the rhythms in a way we've seen before. The next step that Anthony has his students do is to play each rhythm on the yardstick or each 16th note in one 4-4 four four measure. This is another great practice tool to help learn and understand these rhythms. I think we need to take this rhythm grid concept a step further. We need to attack every rhythm possible within a beat. And to do that we're going to start with 8th and 16th rhythms. This idea of breaking a beat down into every possible combination was talked to me by a drum professor at North Central University, Zach Miller. Zach also teaches at Bethel University and has been playing music in the Twin Cities for 20 years. Zach has recorded on over 60 studio albums and he plays with artists like Sarah Groves and Jason Gray. Zach is a great musician and has a ton of insight on the topic of rhythm and groove. So I asked him if he could share his thoughts on this, and here's what he thought. Hey Tyler, thanks for bringing me into this conversation. I appreciate it. I love talking about rhythm, subdivision. Uh, here's how I think of it. Let me just give you a little visual. This is so something that's in my mind all the time. This sort of gridded out graphic representation in my mind of the four subdivisions of a beat broken down into 16th notes, okay? So the beat is represented by this entire rectangle. The length of this is the duration of a pulse. If we can agree on a steady pace or tempo of our pulse, but that, uh, at that point, we can begin to have expectation on when the next pulse falls. And if that's the case, if we can agree on that, we now agree on the same tempo. At that point, we can break down the beats in that tempo into smaller groups or subdivisions of that beat, breaking something larger into smaller equal groups. In this case, our 16th notes, as we refer to them, are the, represented by these four boxes, breaking down this rectangle into four equal parts. They represent the one, the E, the and, and the uh. Those particular terms are like academic music language. It's a very common way to represent those four locations relative to the, the beat as a whole. You can call it apples, bananas, oranges, and grapes if you want. It doesn't really matter. It all will sound the same if you use this placement of notation and timing. But to be able to communicate together, it's nice to have common language, which is why I use one E and a, okay? So, but there's nothing magical about those terms. It's just something that we can then have common understanding of the language we're using. So. Okay, so in this case, if you imagine if every beat is broken down into these four options, there are only so many places that you could place a note, right? If you're just gonna play one note per beat, there's only four possible locations, right? That's gonna be represented by an individual dot in one of those squares, okay? So this to me represents, oh, I'm just gonna play on the beat. But, 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 but as you move through, the next square is, the, is at the E, well, I gotta count all four of these individual boxes in my head. I need to subdivide. One, e, and that, two, e, and that, three, e, and that. Now I can find the location for the second box. One, e, and that, two, e, and that, e, and that, four, e, and that. So keeping track of the spaces as well as the notes you play is the key to understanding how rhythms relate to the pulse, okay? So there are four options for playing one note per beat, playing two notes in a beat. These are the, only, these are the six options. There's nothing more than this, okay? One E, 
two e, three e, four e, and one e and two e and and so on through them. Okay, that makes four. Uh, sorry, ten total rhythms. This is playing three out of the four. That adds four possibilities. Playing the one, the e, the and, the e, the and, the uh. You get the idea. And there's only two left. That is playing every subdivision or playing none of the subdivisions. Okay, so we've got, what is that? Four and four is eight and six is 14. 16, if you can learn those 16 rhythms on that grid and understand how they sound and the counting behind them relative to a steady pulse, you got it made. That's all you need to know for 16th note and eighth note breakdown of a beat. The next step is to learn how to apply these rhythms into your practice. These rhythms are available at kinkykeyrhythmmusic.com and you can check them out. When practicing these rhythms, you want to start with the one note rhythms, then once you get those down, go to the two notes, and so on. A few tips when practicing is that when you're practicing on an instrument that has notes, you don't want to be just changing notes all the time at first. You want to just stick on one note so you can get the rhythm down. Now many of us may even have trouble with the single note rhythms, and I completely understand. Rhythm is always something I've struggled with, and I still have a lot of learning to do. However, I do have a few tips that can help you learn and improve. The first step is to start tapping your feet to music. Tapping your feet to music will help your body get used to the quarter note pulse, which will help you stay in that quarter note pulse when playing with others or with a metronome. The next step is to understand how physicality of your playing works with rhythm. On guitar, it's about upstrokes and downstrokes, and we'll explain that more. We're going to break down the physicality of the 16th note here. You want to understand the significance of your pick stroke when playing guitar. When you're playing the downbeat, you want to use a downward pick stroke like this. When you're playing the E of the beat, you're going to use an upstroke. Then the and of the beat, you're going to use another downstroke. And then the A of the beat, the last upstroke. Another thing to pay attention to is when you're not playing beats. When you're not playing a beat, you want to do a ghost stroke like this. And we'll do a more specific example. So we're going to play this rhythm one and a. When playing this rhythm, you're going to do a down stroke on one, like this. And then you're going to do an up stroke on E, but not hit a string like this. Then you're going to do another down stroke on and. And you're going to do an up stroke on up. So here's that rhythm. One, E, and, da. One, E, and, da. This physicality helps immensely because your hand is subdividing and it's helping your brain count the subdivisions. Now these are just general rules that I often deviate from. Uh, one example is if I'm just playing like an eighth note rhythm, I typically just do down up, down up on the down beat and and. So like one and two and three and four and. Understanding the physicality of a rhythm is really important and it's the first, great first step. The next step is kind of like beating a dead horse, but in a rhythm video it kind of has to be said. You want to get on a metronome. When practicing with a metronome, you want to get to the place where you can take off beats. So first step is to take off the fourth beat and just practice with the metronome playing on one, two, and three. The next step is to take off the second beat, so just playing on one and three. Then take off the third beat, so just playing on one. Then you can take off the one and then go to the two, and so on. Now it is also important to get away from the metronome sometimes and practice with like a backbeat. A great way to do that is to set up some MIDI drums and just get a backbeat going. As the next step is to start sight singing rhythms or just practicing rhythms and singing it. We're going to start with this rhythm right here. That rhythm is one E and a two, E and a four E and a. But when we practice it, we're going to get rid of all the one E and a's and just go to da. So this is what that looks like. One, two, three, four. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Great. Now if you got it with me, sing along with me. One, two, three, four. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Great. 
Sight singing these rhythms helps eliminate the physicality of going up and down with a pick stroke or hitting your drum head and just focuses on the rhythm. If you can sing the rhythms, it will be much easier to play them. Now when I go to play that rhythm, I know the physicality and the cadence of the rhythm that I've sung. So, let's play it. These are just a few tips to help improve your rhythm. The next step is to start working on triplets and polyrhythms. Let me know if you have any other tips down in the comments below. Have a great day.